Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives Oh, our fear is gone Welcome to the Truth Infusion Podcast. Um, I think this is week seven, which is a blessing. Hey, in the number seven... <laughs> hmm. Holiness, completeness. It's the, that, yeah, that per, per number perfection, perfection and, and per complete. Number. So maybe this is the last episode we'll ever do. Is Seven come episode. 11. <laughs> come on, man. Lord, right now we just want to start with a word of prayer. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Kelly just took us to the horseshoe over here. Well, he, he, he's been to Mardi Gras. <laughs> I just want to apologize to everybody out there right now. I'm sorry. Tooth, tooth went to hurt. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm very sorry. We may have to edit the first of this okay. off. I don't know. Just Shot Brandy, the just, y'all You're started at a good spot. Okay, so here's my question to you. It is, oh, I think we mentioned this last week or week before. It's uh, something common that we, we will mention to one another, uh, and it's kind of catchy, I guess, but there's real a point behind it. Uh, we would say, uh, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, Roger, I'm going to be preaching next week at such and such. Y'all pray for me. I'm seeking the Lord for a word. I don't want to get caught speaking. Right. All right. I don't want to be speaking. I don't want to be speaking next week when I get a chance to get in front of the Lord's people. I want to be what? Preaching. Preaching. I'd Proclaiming. Rather, I want to be preaching, news. not speaking. Yes. All right, yeah. so let's don't assume that everybody listening uh, knows what in the world that even means. When you think about the difference between someone standing up on a Sunday morning and speaking for 30, 40 minutes or whatever versus preaching for 30 or 40 minutes, what's the difference Mm. in speaking and preaching? To me, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. uh, Paul was not a very... uh, a uh, good-looking person, historically, if you read the backstory of Paul, and not a very well good speaker, but he he is a very uh, well-known apostle mm-hmm. of Christ Jesus. He had the anointing of Jesus, and that's that's the difference. Other than somebody that just comes up there and starts lecturing at you or, or reading off of a of a PowerPoint, mm-hmm. something like that. I guess one way I look at it, and this is this is just an, a Hestonism, so don't take this. Oh, <laughs> I guess very. I don't know. With a grain of salt. Wait for it. When a man gets up and he he opens up his sermon and he reads his opening text or whatever it may be, and then all of a sudden you just kind of see his eyes zone out and he doesn't walk back to that notepad. He's in the safety zone. You know what zone. I mean? Whenever, and he is preaching, and he very rarely looks at his notes, and he starts going, and, and you see that right there. That's a man who is in an, an anointing that yeah. the Holy Spirit's speaking through versus someone when I look, and they just, the whole time they're saying, and then Jesus came, and he died on the cross to wash away my sins, and that's called the justification of life, and if you go and baptize in repentance and believe <laughs> in the sanctification. You know what I mean? All these things that are true. But if it's just a written down, you know what I mean? Hey, there's it's, no power. It's, it's interesting you say that. And I know we keep going back to Brother Steve Parrish because, man, I've, I've been sitting preacher. there <laughs> listening to him preach. And he'll come and look at me, but he's not looking at me. Mm-hmm. He's, he's staring straight through me. And I can see it in his eyes. Brother Todd reads the same way. And it's like they're, they're looking at you, but they're not looking at you. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, I've seen y'all, whether it be uh, when Wes, he'll, the Holy Spirit a lot of times uh, testify through him in an event, or David preaches, or any of y'all that have said things. It's di- it's, there's a difference. I'm not doing this to brag on y'all. But you look at the point, the difference of when someone heard from God, and it's like, all right, we talked about one time, not not saying what you know the Lord's wanting you to say. You know what I mean? Whenever mm-hmm. you can feel the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, say this, and you're going, Lord, I don't want to say that. And he's right. saying, but I want you to say it, and you're going, Lord, but not it's right not now. It's not my turn to talk this right is now. Not, yeah. Yeah, this is not yeah. the time. He yeah. says, it's the perfect time. You know what I mean? You can tell. Yeah. And, and it's absolutely crucial if you're going to preach. I think that speaking is when I've got my agenda going on, Ooh. when I'm mm. when I've put my plans in Dang. place and it's coming out. And preaching is when the Holy Spirit's agenda is being manifested through my words. Mm. You know, my, my mouth is being used by the Holy Spirit to say what needs to be said. And the Holy Spirit's agenda is to glorify Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, yes that's another good indication. Good point. It's good. What do you think? Good job, Kelly. I don't have any argument with anything y'all have said. I think that that concept of anointing is pointing at the person of the Holy Spirit. 
that is being involved. He's the preacher. You know, I, y'all heard me pray that many times before I preach. Lord, send the send the preacher. Yes, <laughs> amen. Because it ain't me. Yeah, that's, that's and I, I just so many times I sit there before you know the the, the worship teams doing a few songs and the, it's time to preach is coming and I'm sitting there thinking. What am I doing in here? It is, uh, there's so many p- other people, I think, that should be in this moment, Lord. Why in the world did you pick me? If you don't do this, this is going to be a bust. Yes. Right. You know, I, I just feel so inadequate yeah. to yeah. be in that moment. Right. And, God, if you don't do this, yeah. and that's it, there's part of it has to be that, that somehow or another we become absent from the equation, mm-hmm. and he begins to do what only he can do. Well, have you yeah. ever had this happen to you uh, after you preach your sermon, somebody will come up to you and say, man, I loved it when you said such and such. Mm-hmm. And you're like, when did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know I said it. <laughs> it's happened to me. And I'm sure it's happened to every one of y'all. You're or, like, same thing, just a little different slant. While I'm saying it, I'm going, where is this coming from? <laughs> that's good. Good grief. Well, I'm like, I'm going to turn around and say, that's good preaching. Go, Boy, Jesus. Go <laughs> uh, sometimes you can almost feel like you're on the yeah. outside looking in on this. You try to amen yeah. yourself. Right. <laughs> I've experienced that because, man, and, but you're right to the point that, like, I'm off the page now. This, this ain't even in the right. notes right here. I've heard some preachers like that. Y'all don't even have to pay me this part. This ain't even in the notes. Right. That's the preaching I listen to. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that ain't what you. But then, all right. So then, let me let me let me flip the table on us. Jonathan Edwards is considered one of the greatest preachers in American history. Mm -hmm. Considered one of the most brilliant Americans to ever walk. Mm. He wrote. I say wrote. He preached the sermon "Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God," and historically, it would say that when he would, when he when he recited that that sermon, people were were running to the altar sobbing. And they also say that he he wrote and read every sermon. Hmm. And that he wasn't good, he couldn't see. He had poor vision. And he basically preached like this. (laughs) (laughs) Well? With his manuscript in front of his face, reading. Mm. But it was anointed. Right. Yeah. Because look, all these decades later, people are still talking about it. Right. That sermon stands out in American history. It started one of the great awakenings. Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't the method. That's right. Hmm. It ain't the man. Because God also spoke some some a sermon through a donkey in, right. in you know to Balaam, mm-hmm. he can use whatever he wants to use. Jesus told some Pharisees one time, "Hey, you can shut their, the mouths of the people up, and these rocks are going to start speaking." You, can't right. yes. up, you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't want to be I don't want rocks to outshout me. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to speak what I'm being told to say. It can't. It's not necessarily the method or the way we deliver it because people do it different. S. M. Lockridge and Charles Stanley. Very different delivery. Very different. But both preaching the word of God. Uh, something about it is the authority that, that we stand in. Yeah. Steve Parrish and Eddie Higgs. Brother Eddie Higgs. You yes. know what I mean? Very yeah. different. Two totally different Powerful ones. man of God. Yes. Eddie Higgs, he, he doesn't move. Mm-hmm. He does, I say, you no, know, he doesn't like walk around. He doesn't raise his voice. But when that man preaches, you better be listening. You know what I mean? Because it's in the authority of yes. God. Yes. And then you have Steve Parrish, who <laughs> really, he's, he's behind you, and then he's up front, and he's waving a handkerchief at you, and you you know you're so going he, all over the place. He, he just set off a, a match inside a fireworks <laughs> yes, store, man. But it's <laughs> but it's the uh, <laughs> it's the authority. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that's, uh, we've talked about a lot of men here who preach uh, from a pulpit or from a podium uh, to big congregations, mm-hmm. usually. You know, Brother Todd will always talk about you may be preaching at a gas pump, right. and it may be one on one with a stranger, and there's not a crowd. You may have an opportunity to preach instead of just speak across the way to someone at a gas pump or maybe a cashier teller at a store. You may have the only opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the life for eternity for someone, and it's going to be the difference between you speaking. Mm-hmm what you want to say to them, and it's going to be 
than, than opposed to what God wants to say through you from the relationship you had with him that morning, that moment on the way, that moment at work, you stop at lunch to get fuel, whatever it may be, and you preach by the anointing because at one point Jesus told the disciples, hey, don't worry about taking this or that with you. Yeah. Don't worry about taking the script because when it comes time and you get in the right spot and you need to say something, the Holy Ghost is going to speak. Yeah. He's going to give you what to say. And that's where the difference is between speaking and preaching, yeah. you know, just on a that type of terminology. That is good. Mark chapter 1. With all of that as a backdrop, as a Job foundation, West. as a the table has been set. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 uh, Kelly, you got that? Read. Yes. Would you read 21 and 22? They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So here's the greatest preacher that ever walked. And one word that really grabs me, all right, we're going to talk for a few minutes about the authority. The difference in what Jesus was doing in this moment Versus what these people have heard in this synagogue countless times, over and over, the teaching that's been happening in there, this was different. Mm. This was a set-apart moment. And it had to do, the Bible says in these two verses, with the authority with which he did it. Yeah. And here's how his authority started. It says, immediately... On the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And if you look into the Greek here, that word immediately is not tied to the Sabbath. It's tied to when he entered the synagogue. In other words, he walked in the door and church started. The gospel gun was going as he came in. He didn't wait for someone to say in the bulletin, we have now finished the third hymn and we have taken up the offering and it's now time for us, uh, you know, someone to preach. Hang on, we're going to have the invocation. He, did, he, didn't, he didn't wait on, on, on whoever, you know, was in the synagogue leader to tip his hat to Jesus and say, sir, would you prefer to, to speak today? Look, the son of God showed up. Yeah. <laughs> That's... He walked in, and immediately the authority that he walked in grabbed a hold of that moment, and he began to speak the word that his father sent him there to speak that day. What would that have been like to have been a witness to that? Man, mm -hmm. I just I want to do that. Yeah. One of these days, I'll be like, Jesus, what did you preach that day on in Mark chapter 1? Let's hear that one, man. I thought you were just going to walk in preaching, just walk in. No, I want to see Jesus. Yes. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine? We're going to do it one day, guys. Amen. We're going to gather up, and he's going to say, now sit down, children. Let me tell you all some stuff. And this guy that grabbed a hold of everybody's attention, every heart in the room, he had them all right here front and center, and he began to speak. And when he did, the Bible says that they were astonished. Mm -hmm. It speaks to me of the seriousness of the gospel because I'm, I'm assuming that's what he was preaching because we read earlier that Jesus went around preaching the gospel. So I'm assuming that's what he's preaching. And it says that he came in preaching. Then everywhere we read, he's preaching, he's teaching. And today's we have so many churches that treat church kind of like a, a circus. You know what I mean? It's, well, hey, let's come in, give a little bit of scripture, make sure they laugh more than they feel bad. Not gonna feel good. You know what I mean? And then we'll, but then we'll after the third hymn, you don't sing the third line of the third hymn. You just sing one, two, and four, and then we roll on. Jesus Christ, He was showing mm -hmm. this is serious. Mm -hmm. When I come in, I'm preaching and I'm teaching you. Yeah. And then not only that, the authority that comes behind it is, is that's my example. Yeah. As a person who has been called to preach, I preach with seriousness about what it means because it's eternal. Yeah, it's for someone's eternal state, whether it be salvation or whether it be uh, sanctification. You know what I mean? I don't do that, but by me teaching, could help someone listen to the Lord for the Holy Spirit to do it. Yeah, but it's it's a serious thing when we but, preach. And that's why Brother Todd says truth trumps Amen. tradition. Mm -hmm. Which there it says he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Yep. The scribes no, had on it. scribes had position. But they didn't have the authority. Ooh, that's a good one. And they had their yoke. They didn't have his yoke. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the Father's anointing. So they were used to seeing in the synagogue the teaching, like we talked right. about on the other episode, where he was 
you know, from age five to 10, you're mm-hmm. learning this. And from, you know, you're going through that process to hopefully at some point get selected by the rabbi. That's what they were used to. But when he come in teaching and he come in with authority and he's teaching off yeah. of all that they had ever learned, but he's showing them a new way, they're, that's why they were scratching their heads. Dwayne had brought out earlier, um, and this is, this is we, the, to draw the comparison of what they were used to, like you're saying, and what they were getting right here. They were used to these scribes and these Pharisees droning on and on. I mean, guys, you ever, <laughs> you ever listen to someone speak from yeah. a pulpit for an hour and think, mm-hmm. you start praying, but it ain't because you're thanking the God <laughs> for what you're receiving. You're trying to get an exit now. How do I get out of here? Is it time to go? I'm hungry. Right. Look, Look, here's, and, and the point I'm trying to make you. is there is the, uh, the, the un, uh, anno- the unanointed, I don't even know if that's a word, the not anointed, no authority, droning on and on is what they were used to from these scribes. They would grab a bit of the law, but then they would say, now, now Rabbi so-and-so said this, and then they would talk about this guy said this, and this guy said this, and they're quoting this, and they're going on and on, and they're lulling people to sleep, and basically they're in the building because that's what good Jews do. Education is not anointing. They go, well, that's true. They Tradition. go to church. Checklist. They go to synagogue. And it's the same old, same old. They're in the religious rut. This is what we're supposed to do. So here we are. It's been like this since our granddaddies were here. And suddenly this guy walks in and he starts to preach. Yeah. And he's not saying, now, Rabbi so-and-so said this and that. He's saying, behold, I tell you. Ooh, yes. Man, can you imagine when Jesus is on the, the Sermon on the Mount? He said, now, you've heard, mm-hmm. you've heard it said but I tell you, yes. that's a different kind of thing. And at first, they're probably going, who does he think he is? <laughs> but before it's over, they're going, who is he? Yes. Yep. He knows who he is. Because things start changing. It says that they're astonished. Mm-hmm. And this is a Greek word, which means they are, they are messed up to the point of losing self-control. I don't know exactly what that looks like, except for I think about a football game when when someone, right, or a (laughs) basketball game when someone hits a three-pointer at the buzzer to win and everybody just erupts. Yes. And they're high-fiving and they're pointing and they're like, oh, my gosh. Tearing down the field goal. Man, whatever. They're just, they don't have control over their emotions anymore because they're in a moment of emotional (laughs) escape. Yes. Right? Mm. This is where they are. This is something, this isn't the drummed out old religious, you know, dusty, no good speaking. They've been hearing. And so, man, we go to these churches sometimes as a ministry, and this ain't about, I'm just trying to talk about some anointing and some authority here. But we go into places, and it always floors me to the point of just being, I don't even know how to receive it, honestly. When someone will come up and say, I haven't felt the Holy Spirit move like that, and I don't know when. Hmm. And I'm just like, whoa. (laughs) Man, that's an amazing thing to hear somebody say. And to know that we were in the room when that happened. Yeah. And and that maybe for some reason, and only God knows, he would use one of us as his tool to utilize that moment for that and glorify his son with it and lives get changed because the word of God is given but also what it tells me when somebody says that is they've been sitting in a place Mm. for an extended period of time dry bones it's been spiritual coma yeah church in the morgue well if those scribes Mm. after Jesus finished that day and they were astonished and they were amazed if they when Jesus left the next week, if they came right back in there, sat back down, and began to go through the uh, speaking of the same old way that they had done it for all these years, and they just went right back to that same method, and then six months later, they're still doing that same old method, mm-hmm. you know what they're going to still be feeling? Same they're not going to, that's right, they're going to feel the same thing they felt forever. They're not going to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So if you don't have that mm-hmm. relationship, the personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that anointing, Mm -hmm. then it don't matter how many places you go where the emotion or truly the Holy Ghost comes in with an anointing and bam, astonishes you, like you were just talking about in that example. And I know exactly what you're talking about. But if you come back to that same place, same time next week, and there's no anointing, 
you've got to dig and find that relationship in here. Get the, let him give you his anointing. Find out who the person is and don't, if he leaves out of the room, follow him. Hmm. Hmm. If he leaves out of the building and, and, and next week you come there and he's not there, follow where he is. And I'm not saying follow truth infusion where they go. That's by no means what I'm saying. But you can find the person of Jesus Christ right here in this word. And in your prayer closet, you can get that relationship with him. You don't have to stay in that same place. Mm -hmm. Follow him. Absolutely. You have to go to the well. Mm -hmm. The well. Otherwise, you are going to be parched. Yep. The capital W well. That's the thing about it. If you don't go to the well, you'll die of thirst. Hey, man, and I don't know if you get asked this, and I'm going to. I'm not in the band. Most folks know that. I don't play an instrument. I play a mean air guitar. (laughs) I'm the lead crybaby. But I get people, when we go into these churches, they'll they'll come up to me and Jennifer and say, well, what do y'all do? Yeah. (laughs) Every time. They're like, so why are you here? (laughs) I get to worship the Almighty God, and I get to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And I get to cry my eyes out, and I get to have chills run up and down my spine. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't have to play an instrument to Amen. worship my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you're part of the infusion whenever that's, that's going on, man. No you're in idea. on that, Lord. Yeah. Thank but you, with, God. But, but the yes. next day when you're in your truck going to do your job, it happens there, right? Yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm at the well. I'm not at a Truth Infusion <laughs> concert or a whatever else. I'm at the well of Jesus Christ getting to worship the Almighty God. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm charged Well, there's up. two types of people <laughs> in this world. Hey, we, me and you both been to stand up. I'm just telling yes. you right now. There's two types of people. You either child of God or child of Satan. Yeah. Is that no, not what Jesus said? True. You know what I mean? The scripture says you're yeah. either child of God or child of Satan. Dead or alive. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Please forgive. In the next verse is coming down <laughs> in, in Mark right here. Mm-hmm. It says that there's a, there is a spirit in this church. Mm-hmm. In this synagogue, there is a spirit. It is not the spirit of Christ, right? Mm-hmm. It's a demonic spirit. And this right here is normally where I start to lose some people when I talk about it because there's a lot of people who want to downplay the supernatural. Well, if you don't believe in the supernatural, you don't believe in Christ. You know what I mean? Because he is supernatural. He is supernatural, yeah. And so if we're not letting the Holy Spirit fill our churches, then what are we letting? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not his spirit. And so the dangers of it is we get here in verse 23. Can I read it? Mm-hmm. Am yeah. I allowed? Go for it. <laughs> 23 and 24 say, Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now before I let y'all forevermore tear it up on the authority of Christ, because I know y'all finna get it, what are you allowing in? That's a question I have to ask myself in my home. I should ask yeah. it in my church. I should ask it everywhere I go. What spirit am I allowing in? Because there's only two. And if it's not the Holy Spirit, then it's one you don't want. And so I don't know. You have to really well, the church it. ain't just the building. Paul said, "Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost?" So you're the move. You're the moving <laughs> mm-hmm. right. tent. The moving temple. We the are moving. the church. We are the yes. church. Yeah. This yeah. is the temple. So, what spirit is in you? Yeah, and it, so it's a good point to make. Uh, I think you know on, on any given Sunday. The enemy is leading more church services Ooh, yes. than the Holy Spirit is. Yeah, uh, just because it has a church building with a church sign and some scriptures are being used during the process of a Sunday morning service doesn't mean there aren't unclean spirits uh, in the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Satan goes to church every Sunday, y'all. Yeah, he does, yes. and uh, he is involved in religion on a high level because it it, it pulls in more human beings than probably any other tool that he has. And it points human beings to human beings. Oh, yes. That's what Instead religion to Christ. does. A, a little G gods. Yes. Right. So check this out, though. Look, look at the authority of Jesus on this level. Yeah. He, he's, preaching, he's, he's preaching in this moment, and this evil spirit is in this man, and it doesn't say a word mm. until Jesus has said everything. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and I don't know if he says in Jesus' name, Amen, at the end of at the end of the sermon or not. <laughs> in my but name, amen. but it, it wasn't until he was finished Holy doing God. what he came to do and to say that the demon said, "Okay, now I have the opportunity to yeah, speak. Now it's my turn. Now it's my turn." Because he was he was obedient to that authority. Mm-hmm. He was not obedient to the lordship of Christ because he's a demon. Mm-hmm. But he does respect the authority of Christ because when Jesus gets through speaking, then this conversation begins. The concept of an unclean spirit 
as I was reading, one commentator was saying the wording here is, is, is to paint the picture that this spirit was in the man as much as the man was in the spirit. It was like a melding together of this evil spirit with this man. It's the same concept that Paul would use in some of his word pictures of what happens when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside a human being. It's not a good way that we don't say it this way, but this is the truth. I am possessed. Amen. Yes. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. That, that takes a, a weird connotation in, in our concept, in, you know, today with the possession. So we don't say it that way because it'll throw some people off. But it's just the bottom line. I am his possession. Yeah. You are I belong to him. With a price. Yes. You so, no longer so belong he owns to yourself. me. Yes. yes. Right? And in the same way, this evil spirit was in possession of this man. So mm -hmm. it's not the man that's talking to Jesus in this right. moment. Right. It is this spirit speaking to him, but he's doing it on a way that most human beings don't know how to do it <laughs> because he's recognizing the person of Christ right. yes. with what he says. What do we have to do with you? Watch Jesus of Nazareth. He calls him the Holy One of God. Yeah. Boy, these demons recognize yeah. the authority and the person of Christ better than Folks do. Right. In so many, man, <laughs> good grief. But the difference being this, the demon recognizes the authority of Christ and his ability, but right. does not bow to the lordship of Christ. Yeah. Whereas we, you know, when we have that relationship with him, we recognize his authority, his ability, but we have bowed and submitted to his lordship if you belong to him and he has possession of you. Right. And how also whenever we you know we talk about kind of open this up talking about, you know, to preach with authority, the, what's the difference in someone that's speaking and someone that's preaching? Mm -hmm. uh, man, when you when we preach under the, the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be reaction. Mm -hmm. Has to be reaction. Right. The whole, you know the I mean? whole decision thing. The decision thing. There must decisions. be mm -hmm. yeah. there must be decision, there must be a response. And so that's one of the ways also I, I can use to gauge Heston was you speaking? Or not, but you, I, lo I love this here, how whenever Christ came in, because apparently this man was been there. The scribes have been teaching, and there's never <laughs> been a record, right, of, any, of this happening. He was there and fine. But when the Son of God came in and right. started preaching, he could not help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? He, and he was, like you said, he wasn't saying he was Lord, but he said, I know who you are. What do you have to do what with What are us? you doing here? Because yes. I know what you can do. You can destroy me. And I like that illustration you did about the ones he already put down there in the pit and how he came in and said, didn't work. Yeah. But anyway, this man, right, they knew. And to me, that that's just a, that is authority on a whole different level. To where the, the the evil spirit couldn't even be quiet as to say, "You can destroy me." Mm -hmm. If someone could destroy me, I'm probably not going to remind them of it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If someone I'm has getting a, out of the building, right? I'm not going to do it. But whenever <laughs> Christ came in, this demon could not help. It says he cried out. Yeah, cried out. Man, that's authority. That's the power that right. comes through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. Amen. That that same authority we can operate in mm -hmm. it's not our authority <laughs> and really this word authority is exousia it's a, it's delegated authority it's authority that's given in other words god the father says this is mine Here you go. okay so i've got a 24 year old and i've got a, a 16 year old and a, well she's 17 now 17 year old and 16 year old <laughs> when they were much younger you know, Colin is the older sibling, so Jennifer and I would leave the house. Do we go out, or we got to go to the store, or whatever? He's old enough now to watch his brother and sister. I would delegate my authority to Colin. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what the rules are. You know what I expect. Reagan Taylor, you listen to what he says. Right. Not because he's all of a sudden become the man of the house. Well, they weren't his. Right, they're not his. They belong to me. So does he, and I have given him. In other words, my name, my authority to operate in that moment. Uh, now, sometimes that worked out for the best. Sometimes it didn't. <laughs> but that's how it is with kids. But that's delegated authority. He is operating on my power, my strength, my name. I've given you that opportunity to do that. That's the authority that we can stand in when we stand in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We can stand in his authority that he now, Jesus said, all authority has yeah. been given to me in heaven yeah. and in earth. It all belongs to him, right? right. Yeah. But in the moment I stand in Jesus' name, even, even in the face of an unclean spirit, yeah. 
the person of Jesus Christ in me has authority. Right. Amen. All right. So I share this story uh, of an, a, a, an interaction that I had one time. And we're going to, we got to get to, to probably to a close here, but, but you know, how do how do what hap- what happens in the Bible days apply to us in 2021? Well, it does because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> it's absolutely All right. Irrelevant. So if it's not Bible days are here again in every day that we live, it's not because the power of God has less, and it's because we're not standing in the authority that we have opportunity to have delegated right. to us. That's right. So I remember being at at the bikers church one time, and. Uh, I don't remember if we were leading in that service or, or if I was just there or, or what the situation was. But altar call comes, and I was in the altars receiving people who were coming for prayer. There was a lady that I had noticed in there, and I had seen her several times, um, multiple times in the previous months. In town, she, I don't. I think she was probably homeless. I'm not sure about that because I never spoke to her, never stopped. I would like drive by and I'd see her in a parking lot or see her walking down the road. And and uh, one time, I'm coming down a particular road through Texarkana. It's dark and it's in a stretch where there's really not even a lot of light, like street lamps. It's dark, and she was standing this lady in the middle of the road. I mean, no median. I mean, car going north or east, car going west, and she's on the dotted line. Mm -hmm. And she's just standing there with her hands up in the air, like, hit me. And either, and I thought in that moment, she's probably possessed by a demon. It just, you don't do that unless you're in a bad, bad place. And uh, so I'm way past her by the time it's all, my mind's like, oh, my gosh. And I called the police and said, there's a lady just in the middle of the road inviting a car to hit her. I don't know what happened in that moment. This is the lady I see in the church that day. She's in the back. And uh, altar call service is going on, and she comes down to me. Now, she is just, she comes to me, and she's standing about as close as you and I are, and she won't even look up. She's looking down, and she's just agitated. She can't sit still. She's not, she doesn't have rest. It's just like she's being tormented or something. Now, she's not saying anything. She's not acting out. She's just, uh, uh, and she's kind of talking under her breath, and she's rocking back and forth. And I don't think it was outlandish or like that. I don't even know if the people in the front rows know this is going on. But she's right in front of me, and I'm seeing this. And I finally, I said a few times, what do you need? What can I do? You know, how can I help you? I don't remember something like that. And she's just rocking back and forth. And I'm thinking, God, what am I supposed to do? I'm starting to pray about this. Yeah. Because in my heart, I'm thinking, this lady's got a demon. Well, this verse came to my mind. I love it when God just pulls, you know, out of the well of your spirit scripture right at the right moment. <laughs> and uh, 1 John 4 Two says, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. That's the thought that came to my mind. So she's rocking back and forth, and she can't answer my question, and she's there for a reason. And so I just said, say Jesus is Lord. Because this guy in Mark chapter 1 recognized who Jesus was, but he didn't say, oh, Lord, my God. Right. Right. He didn't. Yeah. I said, say, Jesus is Lord. I probably said that to her about three times. And then somewhere in there, under her breath, looking at the floor, she said, I heard her. If I hadn't known that that's what I had prompted her to say, I probably wouldn't even have recognized her saying it because it was a mumble. But she said it, Jesus is Lord. And then it was like she went, Mm. It was just like uh, she melted a little mm. bit. Mm-hmm. Kind of like take a deep breath. <sighs> and then she looked up at me for the first time. And she said, Can I give you a hug? I said, Oh, <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So she came yeah. up and she hugged me and she smiled. She turned around and she walked off. Yeah. What happened to her, David? I don't know. I haven't talked to her since. I didn't see her again. I, I don't know what happened in that moment. I don't know. Did she get saved? Something inside me says, I don't think so. 
Yeah. Well, then what happened? She confessed Jesus Christ uh, in that moment, and that demon could not maintain that possession. Mm -hmm. It's like when David, King David, would start playing worship songs, and that spirit that was vexing Saul couldn't mm -hmm. stay in the presence of that. It had to go. Now, the next day, it may have come back and grabbed a hold of her again. I don't know. Right. But here's what I know. Authority in that moment, it wasn't mine. Yep. I didn't even do nothing. She said it. She said it. Jesus is Lord. But that name and rest came for a moment. Amen. At least for a moment there was peace. That's what authority will do. That's what authority will do. I, I don't know where you're at on this. And, you know, you start talking about, we're going to start talking about supernatural. It gets people messed up. Listen, it's real. Amen. We do it's not real. wrestle against flesh and blood. That's no. true. Principalities and powers, wickedness in high places. The spiritual world is more real than the physical world we live in. Amen. And it's this physical world is like puppets on the string that the spiritual world is manipulating and moving. That's and right. if you don't start to recognize the fact that we are spiritual beings that happen to have a body, not physical beings that happen to have a spirit, you're going to get beat up every day That's trying right. to walk this thing out. Right. So, Lord, help us to learn how to live spiritually under the authority of the person of Jesus Christ so that he can make a difference in our every days. If it's at a gas station or across the counter from the, the lady at, at, a, at, at, at a concession stand or somebody, a waitress that comes up to your table, whatever your moment is, in the name of Jesus, go forward and by that grace of God, he will do supernatural things through you that you could know otherwise, not otherwise do yourself. Amen. You believe that's true? Amen? Amen. 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 Until next week, start. Keep on seeking the truth. Because I